Praise the Lord. I am Pastor Chan Smith. I'm founder and senior pastor of Revival is Here Ministries. I want to give us a quick video update. God is good and he is greatly to be praised. I want to thank God for this video camera to be able to record videos and stuff. I just want to thank God for that. I've been praying for that for a while. And God is really good. And I want to give you a little quick update. What's going on in the ministry? I was able to meet with someone at a church building this past Sunday to see about having a church to have a services and to start a church. It was a positive meeting. They said we could use it on Sunday nights, but that we'd have to pay some. So I had to uh, wait and just to see how much they're going to uh, charge and to see, pray about if that's the best location because they already have their church there. It's been an it's established church, so I just pray if that's the best location or not. We're going to check into other locations to see about uh, what God wants and see what is best. So just keep us in your prayers and uh, just pray about the finances, that we'd have the finances to do it. It might be best to have it in the community center so it would be a neutral location so we can just grow and there be no hindrances. So just pray about that. Just pray that God will continue to open up doors as he already has. Praise God. He is good and he is greatly to be praised. He really is. I know this uh, last revival radio service, I wanted to share an update on that. It hasn't even been a week and there's been over 1,200 listens to it so far. So praise God for that. That's an amazing number. Almost every service lately has been over a thousand listens. So I know more than one person has listened to that when a listen went and just being played, whether it's live or archived. So that is good. God is really doing things. He's uh, changing lives. The ministry is really an international ministry through the internet. People from all over the world have been listening to it. I've been getting emails from Africa and the Middle East. A lot of people have been listening. God has been pouring out his spirit in powerful ways. I know a lot of churches have been started, not because of me, but to just give me testimonies of what's going on. So God is good and he is greatly to be praised. And God's word is going forth. And all your donations that you donate to the ministry is going to a good cause, a fruitful ministry. And I'm going to thank everyone that has donated to keep this ministry going. Just a great thing to know that people is behind the ministry through donations. So pray that the more donations come in. And pray that the God's will be done about the church building and the time and all that, the location and all that stuff. So pray about that. And I also want to give a quick uh, little sermon. It's been come to my attention that three people have passed away lately of tragic deaths, two females and one male. It's been kind of a tragic death that uh, this uh, have been taking place. So I know it's affecting a lot of people. A lot of people have been affected by this. But what uh, the devil has meant for bad, God will turn around for the good. I know you might not think so, but God will turn it around. You just wait and see. And God will be there for you. I know you might be affected by this and it might be bothering you really bad. But the devil, he's a liar. And he's telling you that you uh, won't recover from this, but you will recover. Let's read in Psalms 23. It says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. Is he your shepherd? When he is your shepherd, you're not going to want for anything. You're going to be at peace everywhere you go. Paul went through some severe things, but he was at peace. And you know what? He even wanted to pass away. He said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He wanted to go to heaven. And you know what? When someone is born again, they see a, a, a bad illness as an opportunity, as an opportunity to go to heaven. My grandmother, when she was really sick, I went to see her when she was on her deathbed. She was singing Christian hymns. She was so much at peace, and she had a joy and a smile on her deathbed. She was really ill, 
but she was happy. She said she was ready to go to heaven and wanted to go to heaven. That's what kind of peace I'm talking about. And he's going to make you to lie down in green pastures. Sometimes he has to make us to lie down in green pastures. Sometimes we don't want to lie down. We get this nervous energy. We want to keep working and all this stuff. Sometimes we don't want to stay still. But it says, be still and know that I am God. Sometimes we don't want to lie down and stuff. But he's going to, he'll make you lie down. It's for your own good. I know when a, a little child, they don't want to rest. So they keep going and going and going until they just get completely ill. But a parent... A good parent will make them lie down and take naps. It's for their good. When we are born again, we are children of God, children of the king. It says, unless you become as a child, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. He's going to make us lie down. He will make me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. I know when it's a really... Uh, really heat in the summertime, you have this really heat coming down on you, might even be a drought, what are you looking for? You look for a calm, still stream or lake or something, just still waters where there's a lot of uh, trees and shade trees, and you just want to lay down beside the still waters and just relax, and you can feel the cool breeze coming in, and just re relaxes you and refreshes you. But he's going to lead you to that. And you're going to be able to be refreshed in the water, the living waters. Glory, hallelujah. It says, out of your belly shall flow living waters. Glory, hallelujah. He restores my soul. He's going to restore your soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Here's the thing. We often quote this as uh, we're thinking it's the valley of death, but it's not the valley of death, it's a shadow of death. So a sh the shadow of death has fallen upon you. It's affected you because someone that you love and that you know that you care about has passed away. So that shadow has fallen upon you. You feel that. You feel death now. But it's just a shadow. And you're not staying, you're walking through. Here's the key. You walk through it, and, you're, and it says... When you're walking through it, you're not going to fear any evil. You might be afraid right now. Your world is shaking. But it says, I will fear no evil, and you will fear no evil. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. God's rod and his staff comforts me. It's going to comfort you. Jesus is the prince of peace. You know when the, the disciples, they was in the boat. It was a bad storm. Jesus was in a boat with them. There was a bad storm going on. The boat was shaking. They thought they was going to die. But here's the thing. When it was calm, Jesus was there. He was asleep. So they didn't bother him. They were going on their own way. They was doing their own thing. They wasn't worried. They did not bother him. He was asleep. So a lot of times we go through our life. We don't pray. We don't ask Jesus for anything until something happens. See, when the storm comes, then they were scared. Then they tried to wake him up. See, that sometimes when we go through these things, that's when we want to wake him up. But we don't want to wake him up when it's calm, everything's okay. But there's a storm in your life right now because of these deaths. But like I quoted, what the devil has meant for bad, God will turn it around for the good. The devil done this, but now you're starting to... Uh, want to wake up Jesus. You want to, not that he's asleep, he's not asleep, but you want to call upon him. You want to ask him to be there for you. When Jesus woke up, he said, peace be still and the storm calm. Jesus is going to calm your storm. He walked on the water. Glory, hallelujah. He's going to comfort you. He's a prince of peace. You're going to have a peace that passes all understanding. Glory, hallelujah. He prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Here's, that's, I want you to see this. You have a lot of enemies right now, probably people that's coming against you. You might even be in your own enemy right now. You're doubting yourself. You might have wondered, could you do anything to stop this? And all this stuff might be going through your head. That's what's the key to have peace. But you got all these people that are coming against you. He didn't say, it doesn't say... Then he's going to push them away. Then you're going to sit down and eat. Why they're coming against you, 
He's going to make a nice spread on the table. You're going to sit down and you're going to eat right in the presence of them. So here's the thing. You're going to be at peace. So much peace that you're going to sit down you're going to eat. And they're going to be standing there looking at you while you're eating. In the presence of your enemies. That's a psychological warfare. That you're going to, God's going to work through you to do. He's going to anoint your head with oil. You anoint my head with oil. You have the oil of joy. There's an anointing oil. When you get anointed from God. But there's an oil of joy that talks about in the Bible. He's going to give you some joy. He's going to anoint your head. And you're going to have some joy. You, you, I know you might not think so right now, but you're going to have some joy. My cup runs over. Like there's a woman at, there was a woman at the well. She was a Samaritan woman. A Jew wasn't supposed to talk to a Samaritan woman or Samaritan, especially not a woman, especially not a woman that she, her lifestyle that she had. Jesus came up to her. He spoke to her. She was kind of stunned. She wasn't, he wasn't supposed to be speaking to her. One, she was a Samaritan. Two, she was a woman. But three, her lifestyle. But he said, he told her what she was doing. So what he was saying is, hey, I know what you're doing. I'm still talking to you. But he said, out of her, he's going to give her a living water. And out of her belly shall flow rivers of living water. And it's going to overflow everywhere you go. These people that are around you that are affected, it's going to overflow into them. God's presence is going to overflow into them, and they're going to be at peace. How many times that I've noticed, and I'm not saying this to Brad, but people, you know, they would like to sit beside me sometimes, they'd be calm and at peace, you know, around a person of God. They want to be around them when there's something that's happening, and they feel at peace. Or like even an animal, you'll notice that even animals, they want to be around you. They'll want to uh, stay by your door or something and be close to you because it's peace and anointing. But the God is, there's freedom and liberty. And also, of course, when God comes down, is a, there's a peace. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. And if God wants to touch you. He wants your cup to run over, to overflow with goodness. And all these promises in the Bible are for you. So all these promises of God are yes and amen for them that love the Lord. Do you love the Lord? Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And goodness and mercy is going to follow you all the days of your life. That's pretty powerful. They're going to follow you all the days of your life. You need to receive that. You might be going through a hard time right now, but God will turn it around for the good. I don't care what you have done. He will turn it around for the good. He wants you to know that he loves you. You call upon his name. The Samaritan woman, she did some bad things. But, whew. God was there for her. And you know what? A mighty revival brought, it just broke out there. She went and it was a testimony to everybody. She said, he knew everything that I'd done. He didn't say that stuff to condemn her. She needed to hear that. He wasn't condemning her. He loved people. The people of the world, the, people, the religious people hated him. But the people in the world wanted to be around him. If you're a real man of God, religious people will hate you and they will come against you, but the sinners, the people in the world, will want to be around you. Everywhere Jesus went, people just wanted to come around him. The people that didn't, didn't have anything, the sinners, the people that was ill, they wanted to be around him. They just, about a thousands, he just, he couldn't, sometimes you try to get away from him to have some little alone time with God, you know, alone time with his father. But he could, they found him. It would seek him out. A real man of God, people will be drawn to him. The religious people will hate him, though. They will come against him. So just look for that. But you're going to have peace. Let me read John 3, 16 and 17, because that's kind of a powerful. Well, it is powerful, and you need to hear this. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I know you might have heard that a lot of times, but you need to grab a hold of this. He loves you. God loves you. Are you a whoever? Or do you believe? You, you will have everlasting life. For God did not send to his son into the world to condemn the world, 
but that the world through him might be saved. That's powerful. He didn't come to condemn you. He loves you. God is love. Like I said, these sinners, they come around Jesus. He gave them a joy and a peace. He healed them. He healed them. He set them free. He cast out devils. We need to do what Jesus would do. He said we can do what he did through his name. That he, he gives us authority to use. So signs and wonders should, wonders should follow us because we believe. He said we need to cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead. We need to preach the gospel. That's what we are called to do. Every single one of us that are born again. And the baptism of the Holy Spirit is really important too. So you need that too. I'm going to do some teachings on that. Try to here really soon. Because that's a vital teaching that has been missing in some places. But you need to know God loves you. And he wants to show you that he loves you. I don't care what you have done. I know you might be going through a hard time now because of the stuff you've been through, these deaths. It might shake in your world. Your boat is shaking. Jesus says you call upon him, he will calm the storm for you. I don't care how bad it is. You need to know that. Let me pray for you. God, I ask you to bless everyone that's watching this. I ask you, God, to pour your spirit out upon them. I ask you, God, to set them free, God, in the name of Jesus. You show them that you love them, God. Let your power and your anointing fall on them, God. And just love them, God, in the name of Jesus. I ask you, God, to show them how much you mean to them, God, in the name of Jesus. And whoever is affected by this, all these deaths, God, I ask you, God, to give them a peace, God, that passes all understanding, God. Just pour your spirit out upon them, God, and just be there for them, God, in the name of Jesus. And I ask you, God, everybody's watching this, if they got any kind of illness at all, God, I ask you, God, to heal them, God, in the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to thank you for watching this. It's a privilege to uh, share with you this update and this little sermon. It might have been a little long, but I wanted to get some points across. Didn't have any notes. It's kind of a spur of a moment thing. God put on my heart to do this. So I pray that you, get, that you got blessed by this. I want you to remember, I have weekly podcasts at revivalishere.org. You watch them, you'll be blessed. Also, this, the site is updated now. You can play them from the website right on your mobile device with the HTML5 plug-in. So I encourage you to do that. I have uh, live revival radio services. You can go to blogtalkradio.com slash revivals here to uh, listen to those. My YouTube page is youtube.com slash revivals here M. My Facebook page is facebook.com slash revivals here. My Twitter page is twitter.com slash revivals here M. So I encourage you to go there and check out all those uh, places. And uh, I want you to know that God loves you. I'm Pastor Chan Smith, founder and senior pastor of Revivals Here Ministries, saying God bless you and good night.